If you've watched my videos before and you see high voltage in the title, you know what's going to happen. High voltage is very dangerous. This project could probably kill you. So, I'm not responsible for your actions. If you choose to build this, go right ahead. But I am not responsible for what you do. If you shock yourself, that's not my fault. I'm showing you how to do it. I'm not telling you to do it. In fact, go ahead. Don't do it. You know, this is a bad idea. But really, really cool project. Just be careful. Look, a high voltage capacitor bank. How will I charge it? With this thing. Now this probably looks pretty strange. A light bulb and a tin with a switch on it. What is this? Well, this is my new high voltage capacitor bank charger. You're probably wondering, how does this thing charge capacitor banks? Well, let me explain. You may not have seen this capacitor bank before, but if you click the link in the description below, it'll show you how to build a high voltage capacitor bank for free. Now my old charging video had a fatal flaw with it. The problem the old one had was that it would pretty much blow up bridge rectifiers every time you used it because I forgot to limit the current. So in version 2.0 here, I used a light bulb to limit the current. Now a 60 watt light bulb like I have in here actually is a great resistor at 120 volts. 60 watts is equal to 500 milliamps. So, I have, inside of here, I have a 2 amp bridge rectifier. The nice thing is, if I want different charge rates, I can just use a higher wattage light bulb. So I can use a 120 watt bulb if I want to have double the charging speed. This thing cost me almost nothing to make. The parts were really cheap. These are spring terminals from the back of a speaker. We had a pair of old speakers that were completely shot, and I pulled this off of here. You could use binding posts or just about anything, but I had these lying around and they work really well. Also, there is a light switch. Just a simple light switch for your house. This one I got at Ace Hardware. It was 99 cents. Really cheap. And this is a light bulb socket. I think it was for like a lamp repair kit or something, but you can buy that at any hardware store as well. The cable came off of just some old broken appliance that I ripped it off of. It's just a simple pigtail cord, standard two-prong American connector here. Now, so that the cord doesn't pull out of the hole that I drilled, I tied a knot in it. Ideally, you would want a rubber grommet around here so that it doesn't cut the cable apart. All the wiring is done with just wire from an old ATX power supply, and all together, the whole thing took maybe, a, maybe like an hour to make. If you didn't catch some of that, here's a schematic. Now you're probably wondering, what type of voltage does this put out? So using a $5 multimeter here, let's see. The reason I'm using a $5 multimeter is because this one is completely expendable. If this one breaks, I am not going to care too much. So nothing is turned on and as you can expect, we are getting zero volts. and it'll keep charging for a minute there, but it should top out around 165. Yep, 166 volts. Eh, still going up a little bit, but that's about all she's got. And again, already charging back up again. And as you would imagine, completely shorted out. Yep, charges right back up. As you can see, my capacitor bank leaks a whole lot because you can watch the you can watch the voltage just run right down there. That's the most efficient way to discharge it, right there. And as you can see, even though the bank is discharged, it's still creeping up there. So there's a little bit of power left in the capacitors. That's why it's important to keep these banks shorted out when they're not in use. That way the voltage will never go up. But there you go. Really simple charger for a high voltage capacitor bank like this. Shocked myself.